isn't it? <laughs> and therein lies an evolutionary riddle. Why is infant distress vocalization so particularly pitched and enduring? Surely, in the savanna death grounds of our early ancestors, healthy survival instincts would have dictated ditching these predator beacons. <laughs> or at least preferring their younger, or sorry, quieter siblings. Now, previous attempts to explain this phenomena have cast the infants and adults at competing uh, ends, with the infants trying to blackmail the parents into more resources. This is true. This is known as begging theory. Um, Begging theory is in itself begging the question. <laughs> our, proposal, our proposal, by contrast, suggests that extreme infant distress vocalization, or crying, um, <laughs> could only have survived if it offered some sort of advantage to humans, adults, and infants at the group level. And our hypothesis, which I'll explain in a minute, relies on both more classic research, which shows that intense infant crying raises the autonomic stress flight or fight response, and also on more recent research showing that adult humans exposed to intense infant crying perform significantly better on violent motor tasks <laughs> compared to those who listen to things like birdsong or nothing. The task was actually whack-a-mole. Uh, in light of this information, the hypothesis is clear. Our early ancestors harnessed the natural adrenaline boost provided by crying infants by naturally harnessing infants to themselves and carrying them into battle with them. Now, now, the exact details of this process are, of course, lost to time, but we believe that several groups hit upon this independently, leading to the traditional garb still found in many societies today. Now, I know what you're thinking. Um, once stated, this might seem intuitive and even obvious, but we thought that we tried to delve into it and bolster it with some math. This math represents a computational model of many hundreds of tribes engaging in periodic conflict with one another over some number of generations. Now, I, I don't want to get too much into the technical details, so let's not. Um, <laughs> the actual paper is available upon request. Um, I, I do want to give you the intuition behind that math. What we did is we simulated many hundreds of tribes. Each tribe contains 20 members, which is an ecological number. Each member carries one, for simplicity, quiet or vocal infant. The tribes are then randomly assigned, um, and they pair off with one another, and they might engage in conflict. And when they engage in conflict, the tribe with the larger proportion of vocal infants is more likely to win, thereby uh, removing the other tribe from the population and spreading their own vocal genes instead. However, following this conflict phase, there is a culling phase, where vocal infants might be deleted and, <laughs> and replaced with, with quieter, quieter infants. This um, bit flip operation happens with a probability proportional to a theta parameter, which we term unbearableness. <laughs> Now, I'd like, to, I'd like to show you some videos from our simulations. What we have here, each block represents a large number of tribes in different unbearableness regimes. Because, um, So what you'll see here is a movie of several tribes, each tribe has several members, in different uh, theta parameters. There's low unbearableness, high unbearableness in the middle, somewhere in the middle. So as you move forward in time, when the unbearableness is quite low, right over there, where everything turns green, you can see that each tribe quickly harnesses as much vocal infants as it can, and the vocalness spreads throughout the population. Um, however, if you, the unbearableness is a bit too high, vocal infants quickly become phased out of the population. <laughs> There's an interesting regime there in the middle where we expect a stable uh, population of vocal infants. So what's the actual ground truth? Well, we can estimate the unbearableness by relying on our current best estimates for the infanticide rate in Paleolithic time. <laughs> now, now, 
most sources put this figure at around 15 to 20%. And when we plot this out, we can see that our model predicts that given this figure, we should expect a stable, vocal infant population of between 20 and 35%, which is exactly the proportion of colic infants in modern human society, colic being extreme infant crime. <laughs> So having presented the literally incredible evidence for our theory <laughs> from both psychology, physiology, math, and fashion, I'd like to leave you with this final parting thought. The next time that you find yourself in some cramped space with an extremely vocal, distressed infant, and you feel like you just want to kill somebody, <laughs> take comfort in the fact that one of your ancestors probably did just that. LAUGHTER